Hey guys, it's Sam and this is my spoiler free review of Bone Crier's Moon by Catherine Purdy. This book was my Patreon book pick for the month. Every month my Patreon supporters get to vote in a poll for a book I will read and review that month and this one is the one that won. So if you'd like to participate in my content in that way with polls, with the discord chat, with buddy reads, things like that, I will link my Patreon on the screen. So this is the first book in a YA fantasy duology that follows three perspectives. First is Elise and she is a bone crier and she is training to become a farrier which is somebody that ferries the dead once a month during the the new moon. Now bone criers are magical women who all get their powers from killing and taking the bones of animals and then getting their animal abilities. So sight from falcons and strength and bravery and ferocity from like wolf things like that. And in order to become a fairy you have to have three of these bones and then you do a ritual on the full moon and during that ritual you basically have to kill your one true love and that's part of the ritual and they are summoned there. Now Elise has to do her ritual and things go a bit awry because Bastian, one of the other main characters, gets involved. Bastian's father was actually killed years ago by a bone crier so he's been waiting on full moons for a bone crier in order to exact his revenge. Then we have Elise's best friend Sabine and she is actually somebody who doesn't really want to be a bone crier. She doesn't want to kill any animal. She doesn't want to kill anyone but she deeply loves her best friend and so she gets pulled into everything as well. Everything kind of goes from there. So first off we talk about the world building. This world building was cool and something that very much speaks to me because we have these magical women, all women, who have this connection to the moon so they also get some kind of power from the moon as well and they worship both the moon and the god of the underworld who in the mythology are in love. You see how much this speaks to me. They have control over the dead and they ferry the dead to the underworld. These are all things that speak to me. So I did really like the mythology but I did find things about the mythology to be like a little almost like half-baked like it would have been so cool and there was so much cool imagery there's also stuff with like owls like there's just a lot that really appeals to me specifically however there were still things about the mythology that I feel like could have been done better because it just felt like it didn't quite go far enough so for example like heaven and hell is sort of referenced and this is blatantly a fantasy world that does not have like an Abrahamic religion which is where the concept of heaven and hell come from so like that was really bizarre because it didn't really like they, they definitely had this thing where like oh some people who are like sinners get chained and go to hell I'm just like I would have liked that to be a little bit different or maybe based on a different mythology of ours instead of it being like this thing that feels very not Abrahamic religion and then kind of is like it, it was it was a little bizarre for me and then a lot of things just like weren't really explained like the way their magic works how they get their magic and maybe it's because the main characters like don't really know and don't really ask or care there's a lot of things I'm just like this doesn't quite make sense next I talk about our characters I like our characters but like they also sometimes did things that were just a little annoying <laughs> the thing that really bugged me actually about the characters was although I love Elise and Sabine's female friendship that was like the only strong female relationship and all the other ones were like really bad like stereotypes, archetypes, whatever you want to call them. For example, Bastian has a female best friend who's involved and she gets very jealous of Elise like instantly and it was just very like typical like I don't know teen drama movie type behavior that I'm just like why are we having this? And then the villain also is a woman and a lot of her motivations are very like stereotypical doing it for love but also the wrong reasons like romantic love. And so that was also icky. So like a lot of the female stuff, even though this seems like it should be so like female empowering, kind of is it. And so that bothered me. And the characters were fine, but I didn't find myself like super rooting for them or not. Again, I was really pulled to the women, especially having that connection to the moon and all this stuff. But generally speaking, like the love story in particular, I wasn't super rooting for, even though I should be, because it has a lot of the elements that I love of like faded lovers being torn apart by circumstance and like kind of hating each other it's the vibe I like and I didn't hate it but I just wasn't like as as angsty you know the, the hurting of the chest that I've talked about before I didn't have that and lastly we talk about the plot kind of like I mentioned with everything else I just felt like it wasn't quite what I wanted it to be again some things were like not explained in a way that made sense and also there was a lot of things that felt like certain parts went on for too long and dragged too much and then other parts were much more rushed. So I think a lot of the answers to the questions that I have will mostly be in book two because this is a duology. But yeah, I wanted more out of this. 
it wasn't bad, but I also know I liked it slightly more than others might because it has so many tropes that I do really enjoy. So ultimately I gave this 3.75 stars. I will probably finish the series. It's one of those series that like right now, like, yeah, I could finish it, but the next book isn't out yet. And I'm, I'm, I can see myself losing interest because it's kind of like a middle of the road for me. So I didn't hate it and I would definitely continue, but I don't know if I will end up doing so by the time the second book rolls around. We'll see. So comment down below and let me know what you thought of Bone Crier's Moon. Thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye.